They can self-hate better than anyone I've ever seen. And when it comes to killing each other, oof, uh, you guys are, are pros. Hats off to you. Let me just ask you a question about that. I get that that's happening, but have you ever heard of the IRA? Do you know what's going on in the Ukraine right now? There has never been a more undeserved, entitled person than the black woman. Kerr and her baby daddy. Just a suggestion. Kerr and her baby daddy. That's all. Get out of here. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Hey, you ain't enough. even supposed to be here. Nope, give me your phone. Go ahead, get off of me. Take this shit. Oh, don't drag me up a go. Black women are fucking terrible. They're they're mean. Girl, get the fuck out of my face. Uh, they don't seem very intelligent. Uh, and and you can't tell them anything. And they think they're amazing. Take my picture, hey. They have this impression that they're everything: beautiful, smart, talented charismatic, charming, like they really believe that that's how they are. And yet they're the worst fucking people in this country. I got to say it. Are can you, you please, an adult? Can you, you want to watch? Can you please stop? Wanna watch? Please stop your power. Last trip. chance. Last please chance. Stop your power. You move trip. out of the way. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Anthony Cumia, formerly of the Opie and Anthony show. And uh, I saw the vid body cam videos that he's been posting about, you know, the black women, young black women, old black women getting arrested and acting a fool. And I've done a few of those myself. And yes, they are funny, but it's not as racially one sided as Mr. Kumia would have you believe, as you can see by the intro to this video. So another black guy made a response to Mr. Kumia. And I'm going to go ahead and give my perspective on this video that Anthony left in response to a young man that re made a video responding to what he did on Twitter. So without further ado. Uh, I'm probably going to ask you to pause it a couple of times uh, there, Drew, because uh, I, I can rarely sit through something where somebody is uh, speaking uh, in error um, and now, before I go on, I think I should preface this by saying, I don't totally disagree with everything Anthony says, and I don't totally disagree with everything the brother says, but I think they both wrong. Let it just fly by. So let's watch this uh, together, shall we? Hey, this is called Anthony Cumia. You are a piece of shit. All right, okay? pause. It's a little See, now... <laughs> I was kidding. He called. <laughs> yeah, brother Kenna came out the box wrong. I don't believe when you disagree with somebody that you should just start insulting them. If they're wrong, then you should be able to attack the points that they make and be able to make better points back to them. So, okay, and it's a little rant. I know that even though you guys act like you're based, you probably won't be able to listen to the whole thing. But, you know, the thing pause, that pause, really. You can pause that. Because I made a point when I tweeted this. I retweeted him, including the video and everything. And I made a point of saying, <clears throat> yeah, I watched the whole thing. What am I going to do? Not watch it? Uh, or, or I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to comment on it without knowing exactly what the guy said? See, they think too little of, of you. That's what they do. Like, oh, you're not going to pay attention to some nickel. Like, no, I'm going to listen to you. And I'll probably get a couple of uh, things that you're saying that I agree with. See, there's agreement to be had, but I don't want anybody to make any mistakes. Uh, a lot of people call Anthony racist. I don't know if I'll go so far as to call the man racist. He has his preferences. And some of those preferences may be prejudice, but you know, I can say the same about any other race, including and especially about black people, being a black person myself, we consider the things and preferences and prejudices that we have to be okay. So that's one thing that I disagree with, but let's continue. Let him roll. 
<clears throat> thing that really pisses me off, and you're you're good at trying to piss people off because that's what you try and do all day, is that you are sitting here pretending like you are trying to post these black crime videos um, to to get awareness out. You're a pe- I don't think this young man has really looked at Anthony's body of work. Uh, you know, everybody that focuses on the high amount of black crime is not necessarily trying to do it to uplift people or even disparage people. A lot of people are just regurgitating what they see and giving their opinions. He's a shit for that. You know that you're not posting these videos to try and get awareness out because you don't give a fuck about black. See, that's another thing too. I'm sorry to keep pausing this thing so much, but a lot of, I find that a lot of black people always think they know what's going on in the mind of white people. I live in a predominantly white area and I have found just from my anecdotal experience that white people really ain't thinking about us like that. They got their worries like we have our worries and they just don't really have time to be focusing on us like that. But it seemed like most of our focus is on what they thinking and how we think that they're reacting to a certain situation. And also this guy made this video because he's pissed off. You're emotional, you know, and that's one thing that comes from the feminine side, all of that emotion that you wear on your sleeve, you know, it, it just shows the lack of fathers in our culture, which is not to say this guy, doesn't have a father, but it's the culture that promotes it, that makes us react emotionally first. And I think it was Mike Tyson that said, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the face, you know, and that's kind of how black people are. Once we get hit in the face, we lose composure and become easier to defeat and manipulate. Black people, you don't care about awareness. You use them to inspire hate, get engagement, and try and get yourself paid. All you ever do is okay, say bad. Uh, he's right about one thing. I don't care about black people. I told you. I've never presented my my social media or this show or anything as caring about black people. And, you know, I know some people ain't going to agree with this, but that man got the right to do and say that, you know, just because everybody else is walking around talking about Black Lives Matter don't mean that everybody agree with that. You know, for one thing, that's a racist statement in itself, because uh, just to say black lives matter, what about the lives of aborted children? You know, what about the lives of the elderly? What about the lives of murder victims? You know, everybody's life matters, man. So when you single it down to a group and become racial, you alienate people. But that's a tangent. Let's continue. When I talk about the crimes and the violence and the self-hatred and murder in the community and everything, I'm not talking about it so that black people can can help themselves because i care about black people i understand if that. i've if i put that across i am truly sorry you didn't put i that don't across. care <laughs> i care about white people i care about my society my country i care about all the things that black culture uh, is is ruining. All uh, right. Once again, let me get this man props. Even though I I don't want to hear what he just said, I fully support his right to say it, because that gives me the right to say what I want to say. I disagree with what he's saying because I don't just care about black people. I care about all people. I mean, really, something is minor minute difference as eye color, hair texture, and the color of your skin. When we have so much else in common, you know, we really are in this thing together. And they're gonna kinda go over that later in this video, but I do applaud this man for having the guts because I don't see a lot of white people saying that, man. They not saying what they feel. And I believe in order for me to know how to deal with you, I'd rather know where you coming from. In this country, that's what I care about. Uh, so don't be mistaken that I give a flying fuck about black people and Amen. what they're doing as far as it affecting them. Hallelujah. The fact that they're offing each other in record numbers. True. That, that. they live in self, um, self-inflicted uh, poverty and...
All right, now don't 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 go off the reservation. Self inflicted. <laughs> Come on, man. It's not self inflicted. Do I really have to go over this? I mean, I'm not one to look at the past and look at slavery and all that and say we have this post traumatic slavery syndrome and all that. I don't believe in all that stuff. But the fact of the matter is is that you took people from where they were, you took their language away. You made it illegal for them to read and write and learn. So automatically right there, they're placed at a disadvantage. And then by virtue of just how they look now, all the way up, think about it, go up to those fifties. Remember all of the, in, in the sixties and early civil rights, remember all the uh, hosings and the dogs. And you remember when People were just trying to go to school in Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia and all the white people was, you know, how they were back then. That wasn't that long ago. So it's sort of unfair to say it's self-inflicted. It's self-perpetuated. Now that we are in that position, we're not doing anything to get out of it. But bro, self-inflicted, I think that's the piece that you're missing. You're not really looking at the whole picture. So you don't understand why people are reacting the way they react to what you say and and apparently you don't care and i get that but let's go ahead suffering where you know you don't sweep the front stoop you don't clean your fucking driveway uh shit like that i don't i don't give a shit do whatever you want in your little communities as long as it doesn't affect uh whitey but it does see it does our tax dollars go to pay for uh, uh an insane amount of money goes to to uh, black communities, and they're just abominable. So no, I don't care about black people. You're right. I'm not. I'm not voicing my opinion on social media and this program um, because I care about black people. Um, awareness. Touché. Yeah, it is awareness. Every fucking mainstream media outlet will never talk about the atrocities that are being committed by. Yeah, he kind of right about that because there's a plan. See, this is a rich white man, but this is not an uber rich white man. There are rich people on this planet that think of him as a peasant, that think of him as poor. So he doesn't understand what the agenda is with those people. It's past wealth, it's past race. You got people that's so bored that now they wanna play with your life. And that's getting into another conversation with you know the elites and the people on this planet that is a very few and far between, but are really pitting us against each other. So be careful with that, Mr. Kumia. Black people in this country, they can self-hate better than anyone I've ever seen. And when it comes to killing each other, oof, uh, you guys are, are pros. Hats off to you. Let me just ask you a question about that. I get that that's happening, but have you ever heard of the IRA? Do you know what's going on in the Ukraine right now? What we doing pales in comparison to that. And just because you make a formal declaration and put some people in uniform and then, you know, say that you have a right to do it, it's still killing. And also remember the conflicts in the Middle East? What do you think was happening over there? So yeah. Black people need to tighten up. We need to clean our backyard, man. But no, I like it's just us. It's just that you're justifying what other races do and only focusing in on what black people do. And you got the right to do that, man. But I got the right to call it out on the other side. But the unbelievable disparity in interracial violence, when you go from black to any other race, as opposed to any other race to black, is blatantly obvious. It screams at you. And if you just go back 40, 50 years and flip it, it was the other way around. You ever heard of lynchings, sir? You ever heard of that? Do you even know how many black men were lynched in the South? Do you even have any idea? No, you don't know that because you don't have those statistics. It doesn't justify anything that we did, but it doesn't make right what was done to us, bro. The difference. So yeah, you're doing a lot of violence against people. And uh, the media will never talk about it. They will never mention that three black people beat the shit out of a white girl today. It's not, they don't talk about it. 
So what does that leave? Social media and shows like this, which are very, very few. I will beg to differ. Now, I know I don't really watch the establishment news networks, but I remember when I did, all they were doing was showing black crime. It wasn't showing no other crime. Plenty of white crime going on. Yes, it's disproportionate in the black community, but it is still more of it happening in the white community. I mean, dude, we had crack. Y'all got meth. You don't live in these areas where meth is happening. You don't see what's going on. You don't see the violence and you don't see the destroyed lives that's going on with that. Cause you from New York, you ain't from where that stuff is really prevalent, man. So yeah, as I said, it's both sides, bro. You just can't sit here and say that it's all just particularly black people. We do have our problems, man. And boy, we need to do something to tighten that up and we're gonna get to that in a minute. Yeah, it's called awareness. And that's why you fucking hate it. That's why you don't like it. That's why you call me a piece of shit. Yeah, I don't agree with the name calling. To open up all emotional and start name calling, man, that just doesn't serve any purpose. I don't hate this man. You know, I'm proud military, man. I went to the military to guarantee that this man could do exactly what he's sitting here doing. And I don't hate him and I don't need him to like me. That's one thing I think a lot of black people don't even understand about themselves. The only reason you care so much is that you want white people to love you. You want them to accept you. You want them to look at your dark skin and your matted and curly hair and love you. And man, I'm telling you, they just not ever going to do it. So let's get over that. It doesn't matter. You don't have to insult this man to get your point across. And he's going to watch more of your videos. And what I'm going to be looking for is points. Where do you defeat any of the talking points that he's brought up? And you have to make some excuse as to why I'm doing it. Money. Oh, it all comes down to money. Have you looked me up? <laughs> have you looked up Anthony Cumia? I'm a follower of Anthony, man. You know what I used to enjoy most of all? I don't know uh, about the brother that made the video, but I'm older. You know, I'm in my 50s, man. I can remember all the discussions he had with Patrice O'Neill, you know, and Patrice basically felt the way this guy feels, but he didn't get all butthurt about what this man was saying. You have to go back and look up that stuff. Look at, look up Anthony Cumia and Patrice O'Neill and the interactions that they had. And you will understand a little bit more about Anthony. You'll also understand a little bit more about a better way to deal with people who disagree with you. At worth, look that up. Look up some of the news stories of when I signed contracts with uh, radio companies and satellite yeah, you're companies. Rich. Look at the subscriber base on Compound Media and how many, how much they pay a month and do some, you got math. some money. If you can do that, I know your skills. I'm not doing this for an extra two grand a month. Got it's it. nice. It's a car payment. I, I, mean, I would never uh, poo poo uh, a car payment from Twitter every month. I'm you glad you're making my, that uh, much UConn? on Twitter. Feel free. I'm broke. I haven't changed one fucking thing I've done since I signed up for Twitter uh, back in the uh, 2012, I believe, somewhere around there. Yeah, you've been talking. Sh I almost uh, said so, you've been talking you know, stuff for a long time. You want to think it's it's uh, related to money. I'm Italian, not Jewish, sir. <laughs> uh, no, it is pure and simple awareness. I want white people and civil people in this country to understand where this violence is coming from. Who's Man, I don't think anyone is misconstruing where the violence is coming from. But what I think is that we're not really looking at, we're not solving for root cause, man. It's not a racial thing, brother. I know it seems that way, but it's really not. It's a culture thing. The culture in this country as you can see from some of the uh, young white ladies at the beginning of this video, they subscribe to a certain culture and that culture influences their behavior. So I'm only saying that it's not just racial, it's cultural. And we have let black culture be hijacked by people who have inserted degeneracy into it. They pay for degeneracy so black people are degenerate. And I know you can see that.
or maybe you don't care to see that, but that's kind of what's going on. It's perpetrating it and not uh, paying attention to the nonsense you do here on the news as to why we need uh, to, to infringe on Second Amendment and First Amendment rights, which you are, are uh, calling for here. You don't want Elon Musk. You'll see it a little later in his video. You, he doesn't want Elon Musk putting the likes of me, giving me a platform. Why? Because I'm a piece of shit. You see. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm all about freedom of speech. I just believe that when you armed with the truth, when you armed with justice, when you are back by the right, you don't have to worry about people spreading lies, misinformation, all of that stuff crumbles against you. So I'm not afraid of somebody having their opinion, man. I'm not afraid of somebody espousing what they w wish to get across to you. And if it's negative or you don't like it, you gotta suck it up, be a man and deal with it. You should have a point of view and you should have the truth on your side. And if you do, that stuff won't bother you. That's why I uh, do not like when a lot of black people get so overly emotional and so angry about stuff because it seems like they result, uh, resort to attacks, ad hominem attacks, instead of looking at the point and disputing the, the, uh, the point that was made that they disagree with. That's the only way you're gonna ever get anywhere. If not, it's just gonna devolve and deteriorate into some bad behavior. Dang. You don't like what I'm saying, because it's true. You I don't know about true, probably from your perspective, because a lot of things, you know, is perception. You think it's um, uh, related to uh, me wanting money from this? No, it's awareness of something that is happening. All right do is say bad things about black people constantly as if we're all trash right let me stop that brother right here he equates looking at a body cam video and seeing somebody who behaves badly and say that he's speaking bad about black people if you call out somebody's behavior just because he trying to make jokes about it and just because he makes fun of it and even make a little bit money off of it, does it really negate the fact of how they acted and that the behavior was bad? So you can't slide over that. And that seemed to be a, the way most of you brothers talk. And that's really just not getting us nowhere and probably why he chose to look at your video versus somebody's video like mine. But we'll keep going. You don't care about awareness, but the thing that is really sad about it is that there are people that actually do care about um, like spreading that message, awareness, seeing like, hey, look, there's crime going on, people are dying, and we need to change it and do something about it. Pause. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When is this going to happen? I'll be honest with you. We're tired of waiting. We're just tired tired of waiting and it certainly doesn't seem like it's on the right track uh i don't look at the the racial uh the race relations and race uh, implication implications and relations implications and relations since time immemorial of of years ago and look at it now and go, well, at least we're headed in the right direction. Oh, what the fuck? I, I cannot remember, unless it was looting during a riot, this just freedom to steal that is going on with uh, black people. Bernie Madoff. Just walking into stores grabbing armfuls of merchandise and walking out. In one case, running out laughing. A woman, big fat black woman, hands full of stuff, running and laughing. Enron, you worried about black people stealing trinkets, but you ain't worried about the millions and billions of dollars that these corporate white dudes is ripping off from poor people. This is what I mean about perspective. You see what you want to see, and that's fine, and I get it. 
They don't have no right to break the law, but no one does. So, you know, it's, it's again, comes back to man, get your own house clean before you're trying to clean somebody else's house, bro. And I know you ain't trying to clean nobody else's house. You just pointing it out because you have your perspective, but you know, it's, it goes both ways, man. And I can tell you right now, the little theft of the little trinkets that those people are getting cause they're poor. They're going to be broke as soon as they use up those little goods that they got. And you got these people that just stealing people's life savings, man, people's 401ks, people's pensions where they going to be poor now and in that situation. But yet that's not looked at as worse or even need to be brought up or they can't be held accountable. Come on, bro. Because it's funny, because nothing will happen. This is progress. This is white people are supposed to look. No, it's not progress. It's degeneration, man. They, you know, a culture has been forced on us that is degenerate. And that's why people are acting like that. You know, a, a, a top song not too long ago was WAP. And I know you know what that stand for, man. And you know what? It never got in the airplane in my house. I've never heard the whole song. I've just only heard of it in reference and little snippets that people, it's just nothing that would ever, I would ever let pass through my ears because it's so degenerate and so disgusting and so distasteful. But that's the culture of these young women. This is what they looking at. This is what they looking up to. And rather than sit back and be a spectator and say, well, okay, well, look at what they're doing. You know, why are they doing it? If you're going to raise awareness to what they're doing, raise some awareness to why they doing it every now and then, or at least why you think they're doing it. Then again, I get it. Freedom of speech. You don't have to. So I guess it's up to people like me to do that, to raise awareness as to why they're doing it. Because I think we've already gone too far down the rabbit hole. I don't think it's uh, ever going to be stopped. We're past the event horizon on putting that genie back in the bottle, bro. It's, it's just gone because people's minds have been rewritten to be entitled and to be degenerate and to be selfish. So it is what it is at this point in time. All you can do is protect you and your own and try to educate the people that's coming behind you, man. I can go, all right, we're kind of still pissed about uh, you people and what you're doing, but at least you're trying. We see, you know, you're making uh, progress, making headway with this crime thing and stealing and, and violence, beatings, murder. I've been black 54 years. And I know that it's anecdotal experience and evidence. But I don't know nobody that's done any of those things that you're talking about. All of those things are centered, well, see, I'm from the South. See, all of those things you're talking about are really centered around the urban areas. And now they're trying to make the South urban. They're bringing, you know, and, and a big factor for, of that is gang culture, which used to be in LA until the movie Colors came out. Then all of a sudden, everybody had a set. Once again, culture. Now I want you to sit back and realize who is it that is a control of culture, Hollywood, the music business. You know, if you're going to rail against somebody, don't treat the symptom, you know, treat the disease, bro. No, it's gotten worse and we're just tired of waiting. Uh, he says there are people, you know, I just do this to sow the seeds of hatred and to uh, to make money. I don't care why you uh, do it. And I'm a piece of shit while other people are actually uh, making people aware that there is a problem. And they're saying, we got to fix this. And yeah, yeah, who? Where are they? Hollywood? Washington? Really? No. Is that it? No. Who? Us. Name one person of influence who's saying anything. The last motherfucker that told you fucks to, to pull your pants up was thrown in prison for rape. Bill Cosby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, that what you got? Man, in the 70s, everybody was roofing, roofing everybody. Everybody was putting drugs in women's drinks. Everybody was taking advantage of these people. That's the reason why 
guy, my guy, that he got locked up, that he got caught. Everything he did was wrong, but everybody else was doing it. And he was wrong in participating. But when he started telling black people to pull their pants up, the same people that's in charge of the culture that wanted brothers to be showing half their butt in their underwear, locked him up. Look how long it took. He did that stuff in the early seventies and it took till now till he's an old man to do it. I mean, dude, a lot of these things is right in front of your face, Mr. Kumia. And you just choose to take a racial angle. And that means that you being played too, you being manipulated too. you playing your part, just like a whale or machine, bro. You doing your thing, man. They playing you too. They've struck that little emotional chord in you where you want to point out what just a certain race is doing rather than pointing out the, the race or ethnic ethnic group that's in charge of it. That's making all of these things happen. The only way that we're ever going to change anything is if we get it together, which means we have to step back and stop looking at each other's enemies and look at who it is actually causing both of us stress and strife. And I know you got, some skin in the game, man. The, the, the situation that happened to you with a black lady that, you know, you were snapping a picture and she got violent with you and you got fired because you went out and start doing what you're doing right now. And, you know, I get it, man. That was unfair to you, but, it, and, and she shouldn't have been violent, but at the same time, that's probably why you're focusing in on this one group like that. See, I haven't had white men just discriminate against me because I'm black. You know, I really haven't had that. So I don't single white men out and say white men are bad and all this other stuff. Maybe some of these other brothers have. And I think a lot of time they misconstrue it because like I said, black people think they know what's going on in other races minds. They just make up this narrative that they're racist. I get that. But man, it seemed like that little trauma you had with this young lady is kind of leading you down the road where you're at, bro. And you got all the right to go ahead on and say that cool. That's fine. And it's entertaining to watch you do it. It's entertaining to watch me do it. I, I, I reviewed a few body cam videos, man, with, with the sisters, man, because yeah, they're out of pocket. But the, the thing I think when I see that is where is their father, man? You could tell they never had no father cause they don't have no boundaries. Why don't you pull your pants up where you look stupid? Where's your pants around your butt? Oh. Your bird, your bird. What the fuck? Oh, rape, but rape, rape, rape. No one of note in, in the black circles are saying shit. This should be paramount. All the energy going into black celebrities and politicians uh, saying that white cops are murdering blacks in the street. On this, gotta say, I totally agree with Mr. Kumia. You know, all of these black celebrities, all of these black people with all of this money, what is Beyonce and Jay-Z doing? The only one I saw doing anything of substance or note in the, you know, service of black people was Kim Kardashian, a, a straight up harlot. At least she tried to get prison reform going with Trump. And it was some brothers that got released that was in prison unfairly, man. So that was one thing, but he's right. Where are our celebrities? Where are our politicians? Where are our people of note that's saying anything about what's really going on? And the ones that's saying it, even in the church now, they're neutering those people. So, yeah, I totally agree with you on that point. All that energy should be put toward what the fuck is wrong with the black community stealing, murdering, raping, robbing. Uh... Uh, and 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 just the, the basic uh, mayhem coming out of the black community. That should be done. Maybe then a little shame might be spread around and something might actually change. Oh, yeah. He says black people still in rape and robbing. I remember in the 80s when the New York City Police Department was doing that, bro. You forgot about that? Stealing, robbing, raping, doing drugs. So the, the New York NYPD. So I could say that's a select little group of people right there that behave very badly. But this guy talking about there are people talking about it that really want change. Who? And what have they done? 
What have they done in the past few years as we've watched the problem get worse and worse and worse? You ever heard of mediocre tutorials and reviews? You ever heard of Kevin Samuels? You ever heard of Tommy Sotomayor? No, you haven't. So you're talking a little bit out of your head right now. So you don't pay attention to that. You don't pay attention to people who are out there trying to actually do something and make a difference, whether we agree with those people or not. You think I want to come on here and talk about you motherfuckers every <laughs> Yeah, I think you want to. Every goddamn day? Yeah, I think you want to. Do you? I have shit, you know, I want to play a clip from the Brady Bunch show. If you wanted to, you would. Back in the 90s when they reintroduced that, and it was terrible. <coughs> Bullshit. I'd love to just talk about me TV and, and, and whatever else is going on. My, my yard, shooting in my yard. I'd love yeah. to talk about shit like that. Oh, science. God, I love science. You love it so much that you choose to review body cam videos of only black women getting arrested and behaving badly. Got it. Science. Yeah, you're blinded by science, right? Talk about the, the, the universe. Science. Physics. Atoms and how, how uh, things are put together. Oh, well, maybe you should. Get Terrence Howard on your show. He's made some, he's got some amazing theories. You know, well, well, if you're so interested in science, I, I noticed you had Neil deGrasse Tyson on a couple of times. If you were really interested in science and that was what was on the forefront of your mind, seemed like you would at least, uh, your buddy Joe Rogan had him on. Why you ain't reviewing that? Huh? Now, body cam, black women behaving badly. Got it. Oh my God. But no, every fucking day I got to come on here and, and talk about you motherfuckers. You have to? Because the mainstream media won't do it. So it's your job? And the lies get, that get out there about, uh, you know, the greatest threat to America is a white, uh, the, the, the right, far right, white supremacy. Are you out of your fucking mind? Walk down the streets. Who's bopping you over the head? Who's punching Steve Buscemi in the face? Who's hitting old ladies over the head? Black people. It ain't white supremacists. It, I don't believe in white supremacy. It's black people. Black people. So I got. It ain't just black people. I don't know if you ever heard of MS-13. I don't know if you ever heard of the Carter Genus. Uh, there's a lot of other races out there, man. And uh, let's not even talk about what's going on in Europe with some of the Muslims over there. Some, I ain't say all, but some of them are really over there doing some things, man, that I think you might want to open your eyes and, you know, maybe, but see, you won't attack that particular group because I think you like your head on your shoulders, right? Yeah. got to come on here every fucking day and, and talk about you motherfuckers. Cause we're easy target. You know that nothing is going to happen to you for talking about us. They can't cancel you cause you got your own little setup going over there. And that's good, man. You're insulated and that's fine. The worst they could do to you. They've already done to you. I get it. So we low hanging fruit, man, but we're not the problem. As I said before, we are just a symptom of the problem. Aviation. Oh, I love aviation. Would I love to talk about that? The closest I could get is talking about some dumb, fat black bitch that won't leave a plane, and everyone's now stuck getting off uh, uh, back into the terminal while they remove her dumb, fuck, fat ass. And that's my point. And let me ask everybody out there in YouTube land, how many white women have you seen do the same? I just saw a video about a white woman that was got mad because she wanted to be a boy. And they called her a girl and she got upset on the plane. It's the same thing, man. It's not a black woman thing. It's a woman thing at this point. 
They're the second group that's under attack that have been lied to, that have been misled, and now their behavior is out of pocket because of the culture that's being forced on them from a very young age. You got trannies reading to little kids in school. Why are they doing that? Because they want the little kids to be fascinated by being trans, that's why. Because trans people can't reproduce. So why are you just singling out just black people, man. I mean, there are a lot of problems on the, in the world, but I guarantee you it's more white ladies causing the disturbance on these airlines than it is black. Now, come on, bro. You got to give me that. I'd love to talk about uh, uh, Boeing, situation with Boeing. But one of the biggest problems is diversity, equity, and inclusion, and how uh, the quality of workmanship just does, isn't there anymore, so doors fly off the planes. Once again... I agree with you about DEI. I think that's the stupidest thing in the world. Everything comes back to, to what the fuck the black community is doing to this country. Really? <laughs> Everything comes down to what the black community is doing to this country? Not the juice? No? Okay. Because white liberals, and I'll blame them too, uh, are going... Yeah, the juice along with these programs that are putting people that just aren't qualified into certain positions because they're of their skin color and that's it and their sexuality you know white uh women black women uh, that just don't belong there what is he saying women can't fly airplanes is that what he's saying i don't know about that one and how do you know what training they've been in how do you know the person sitting in that seat just because they're a different race, hadn't gone through the proper qualification. How do you know that? I submit that you don't know that. Yeah. So yeah, sorry. Sorry, dude, man. I gotta, I gotta fucking ramble on every day about you motherfuckers. Yeah, I get it. You're prejudiced against black people. That's fine, man. I'm not prejudiced against white people, man. I mean, I, you know, I call out the bad when I see it, and I, I call out the good when I see it, man. I know a lot of good white men, dude. I know a lot of good black men, and I know a lot of good white men that don't. Let me tell you something. At my place of employment, we had training about protected groups, right? You know who the only protected group, unprotected group is the group that basically, I guess you could legally discriminate against discriminate. I'm sorry, discriminate. I just made that up. I'm, I'm platinum that you can legally discriminate against a straight white male 35 and below. Do you know that when I heard that man, I was appalled when I heard that. I mean, that's just crazy, but that I understand that's where the country is going. So you kind of got a point on that right there, the DEI stuff and breaking everything down around racial lines instead of using merit is a big problem. And it's one more brick out of the foundation of this country. All right, what else does he say? You've got all of this big group of people that are around looking at crime. It's like they're mesmerized by it, but the only thing that they're doing is talking crap about how horrible black people are, not, not talking about any type of solutions. So then you have a black person like me that has worked their life trying to make changes to that. And before you guys even had the little nuts enough to even start posting those crime videos of black people, I have been posting them actually trying to raise awareness right but okay let me interject here on the brother i had some 24 inch rims one time on a truck those 24 inch rims got stolen guess what the race of the people were that did it if i go into your little comment section and i could post a video of me calling out thugs on the street because you ain't calling out no thugs on the street Cause them thugs will handle your business for you on them streets. If you was to say anything sideways to any of them thugs. So right now, man, you just talking, bro. Because a child was killed in my community, me calling it out and all these dumbass racist people with fake profiles, of course, are going to be like, Oh, nigger. Um, yeah. See black people are trash. Yeah. All right. Here we go with the use of the N word. Okay. I think that if you going to use the N word, bro, Everybody should be able to use the N word. 
White people, I give you the right, right now. Use the N word. Say it like it make your teeth white. Because that word is toxic. And we ought to get it out of our language. And if black people would stop saying it, then we would have a right to be offended when you said it. But since we use it like we use toothpaste and soap, then you can use it. And we don't have no right to get offended about it. We really need to cut it out, man. Because I'm not a black man. I'm not an N word. I'm an American. That's what I am. When you go to Russia, they don't say black Russian unless you order something to drink. You either Russian or you ain't. So you either American or you ain't. So man, come on, stop this, bro. That's why you gotta wear a bulletproof vest. All of this dumb, ignorant crap. To anyone that can actually think, dummy, Black and white people are in the United States, right? We're in this this boat together in a way, right? Pause. Have... Yeah, we are. And, and like you said before, uh, I personally post these videos without any solutions. Uh, I shouldn't, he says, post these videos um, for awareness. Uh, like he says, it's, it's... Do you, Anthony? A lot of the stuff you do is funny, man. I mean... I can't deny that you're a funny dude, man. And I've been watching you for years. And, you know, I don't agree with everything you say, but I agree with your right to say it. So uh, where are your solutions, Anthony? I have solutions. Segregation. Ah. One more thing I totally agree with Anthony on. I agree that we need segregation. I think black people need to stand on their own without the benefit of aid from anyone else. I really believe that. And I understand that we won't have what everybody else have, but what we would have would be ours. But here's the thing, if we're gonna implement segregation, then we need to talk about reparation. Now, I'm not saying monetary reparation, I'm not saying that. That, that we, you know why I don't uh, agree with monetary reparation right now? Because money ain't worth nothing. You wait it until you devalued it to a point to where it's worthless, then you wanna have that discussion. So here's what I propose for reparation. Black people are exempt from paying taxes, that's number one. Number two, free education. For anything that you qualify for, get rid of affirmative action, get rid of DEI, DIE, whatever it is, DEI, get rid of all that stuff. If you're smart enough to get into MIT, go to MIT, you don't pay a dime. Everything, the whole bill is footed. That way you have incentive to become a contributing member of society. That's the only way you're gonna do it. If I gave you 5 million bucks a piece, Cadillac, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Nike, uh, and the weed man gonna be the richest people in the economy and you're gonna be right back broke. So yeah, I agree. We do need to segregate because we don't need your guys influence on our culture. Remember the nineties, remember Tribe Called Quest, Poor Righteous Teachers, you know, it was a pride thing that was going through hip hop. Left alone right now, we would have modified our culture where you wouldn't even have a problem with black people at this time. But outside forces came in, the people with the money, white people, and they bought and paid for degeneracy. So that's what we gave them. Now we're degenerate. So that's the influence that other races have had on black people. Yeah, leave us alone, let us be poor, let us kill each other, let us do all that on our own. Cut us out, I tell you what, give us Miami, not Miami, Florida, give us Florida. Y'all go do what y'all want to do. Give us Florida. I said Florida because if I want to go ahead on and ball out to Cuba, once y'all collapse y'all society, then I can go ahead on and do that. But I agree, man. I agree with segregation. I think black people had it better when we were segregated than we do now because we had families when we were segregated. We had fathers and grandfathers when we were segregated. And we didn't have what white people had, but my life ain't based on trying to get what you got. My life based on trying to get what I need and what my family need, man. So let's see what you got to say about the segregation thing, brother. You heard what I got to say. Yeah. Our right to, to be amongst people we want to be amongst and not be 
amongst people we don't want to be. Granted. How about that? That's Granted. my solution. Segregation now. Segregation forever. And you blacks seem to love segregation. We I've do. seen plenty of uh, these uh, black-only graduations yeah. happening this year. They love separating from the white people and doing their own thing. Oh, we're graduating this year. Um, we want a black only graduate. And of course, the, the white liberals just hand it to them on a silver platter. Why wouldn't they? Who cares? How does that affect Anthony Cumia? Your black graduation. Hey, the white kids want to have a white. No, never. That's the N word theory. Yeah, if black people can do it, white people should be able to do it. And that's, that's kind of speaking to my brothers and my sisters, man. It's kind of the problem. You want to be around white people. You want white people to love you. White people don't have to love you. And white people don't have to want you around. It's plain that black people don't want you around. So understand, man, you don't have to worry about what they're doing, what club they in, what's happening with them. Build your own. Don't, don't, what happened to work? What happened to, you know, growing? What happened to all this pride that we used to have and just being melanated people, man? Shut up, racist. So, so mutual segregation, that'd be great. I agree. There was a little town down there, uh, St. George. Yep. In um, Louisiana, where, where uh, they had to make their own town because the, the predominantly more well-off white people were sick of sending their kids to schools that were 50% black and their kids were getting beat up, weren't learning anything. Culture, that's all that is, culture. We're three generations removed from fathers in the home, man. Culture, we got hip hop, man. That is basically, they call themselves savages. If Hitler had this kind of network, everybody would be speaking German. I mean, we doing it to ourselves because they've made us love degeneracy. That's why those people don't want their kids going to school with our kids because they still got fathers in the home. They still talking about being educated and contributing to society. And before a lot of these young black people, they, they parents before they get out of high school. And I'm sure that they don't want that. The education system sucked. The teachers sucked. They were babysitting uh, felons. So they uh, uh, got motivated and created their own town called St. George. And they just want their kids to have a school that they could go to and, and learn without this distraction of black violence. My black people, you hear that, what he just said? Why don't we do that? If white people so bad, you let some people run that Black Lives Matter organization. And instead of them doing what those white people did in St. George, what did they do? They went and moved out with the white people, spent their money in the white neighborhood, man. That's your problem. If you want a solution, somebody gonna have to work. Somebody gonna have to sacrifice. Moses didn't get to the promised land, people. We need some Moseses, man. If we ever gonna change it. You so selfish, you think you deserve everything. This is the problem. We need to sacrifice for our children and our grandchildren to make sure that they can have the type of life that we envision that we should have. But that sentiment is nowhere in the black community, man. It's nowhere in it. And I get it because of the culture. And yeah, I'm kind of blaming, but at the same time, we, have a responsibility. Uh, it's like, do you really feel sorry for the kid that when the van stops and they say, hey, come in here, I got some candy for you, and that kid disappeared, you're gonna say that kid had no agency in it? Cause you didn't have to take the candy. The kid being black people, the van with the candy being everybody else. What you doing is you blaming us for taking the candy. So what happens? Well, the other townships that they left in the, the um, uh, town in Louisiana that they, sure they was departed mad. from got mad. Yep. The NAACP got mad. Yep. The school districts got mad yep. because along with their kids, yep. 
They wasn't worried about seeing them white people go, but they was worried about them dead presidents, right? These people were taking their money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want my kids to be educated in a good school. So I will take my kids and my, my community uh, of, of mostly white people and use our money to educate our kids. All right. What's wrong with no, that? Wrong. Ain't nothing well, wrong with that. you're taking the money away from the school. Well, maybe they don't want it going to your school. Maybe they want their kids to be uh, able to get a good education. And you got to figure your own shit out. I agree. So let's get all of your liquor stores out of my neighborhood. Let's get all of your gun shops and your pawn shops out of my neighborhood. Let's get all of your little restaurants, little pizza spots. Let's get all your little Asian cuisines. Let's get all your little Mexican restaurants out of my neighborhood. Let us make our own restaurants. Let us have our own real estate in our own neighborhoods and let us build some wealth. And we wouldn't be worried about your money and where you live at. But see, what happens is you go and make your own little township. You do whatever you're going to do. You take the money, but you still come in my neighborhood selling whatever and in my pocket to where we spending our money in your community, but you ain't spending none of your money in my community. So like I said, if we're going to do this, man, then let's do it. So uh, like I said, once again, I urge the people around St. Charles to understand Make it fair. Make it across the board. Say, okay, get your stuff out of my neighborhood so I can get that property. Like I said, who own all the property in those neighborhoods? Think about it. We can't even get a storefront without paying out to somebody who's going to take all that money and take it to their community and take it to their city. So it's kind of hard, Mr. Kumia, for them to build the type of wealth that you're talking about to be self-sustained. It's kind of hard. You know, you starting to realize how deep this thing goes. It doesn't just happen overnight. Yeah, they've become dependent on it because you made them become dependent, not you, but they've been made to be dependent on it. Without Whitey's money. Yeah, they left. Goodbye. Now figure it out yourself. Boy, they hate white people right up until they leave with the money. I don't hate y'all till y'all leave with the money, but if you're really going to leave with the money, then leave totally, 100%. Don't leave nothing behind. Don't be trying to have no real estate in my neighborhood. Don't be trying to have no storefronts in my neighborhood. Don't be trying to have no gas stations in my neighborhood. Leave. Take it all. Let us fend for ourselves. Then when we build up the little bit that we're going to build up, 20, 30 years, what will you do? Some white man will come in and swindle and take it from somebody because you're going to deal dishonest. That's how you got it in the first place. And I get that's a black talking point and I'm sounding like somebody that's a victim, but I'm really not just telling you how things go and how they go because white people ain't just doing black people wrong. White people doing everybody wrong. You over in countries demonstrating the same thing that I'm talking about right now. You're everywhere doing the same thing, going and buying up, destroying people land, buying it all up. Then those people got to rent that land from you. Those people got to buy your franchises. Those people got to pay your money. You way over here spending how you want to spend it. Same thing you always do. Y'all know the system because you made the system. That's the disadvantage right there that we're coming to. But the only way we're going to break that is education. As I said, for reparations, you give us education free and exempt us from taxes. We ain't but 13, 12, 13% anyway. Well, y'all ain't going to miss that. Most of us don't even pay taxes. So just get the IRS out of my pocket and then we'll take care of the rest in our own neighborhood. Cause people like me will make sure we exploit the money system the way that you exploit it. Then it's like, Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going away from you? That's where we're going. Bye. Segregation. Yeah. That you love so much. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, sorry. This is a safe space. It's the public library. What are you talking about? No, no, this is a safe space for us. And you're just not allowed in here. You're going to have to go. Man, they just taking what they perceive as a little piece of power for themselves. That's the only thing they think that they can do because they lazy. They've been bred to be lazy and they don't want to do anything else. I, you know, y'all don't even really look at those people seriously anyway. That's not a bother to you. I mean, when you go out drinking at the at the pub, wherever you go, you, you worrying about a black person in a college talking about a safe space, bro. Not really. 
you know, when you check your bank account, is your bank account being affected by somebody that trying to carve a little space out for themselves because they know they can't do anything else, at least not immediately, right? No, it's not right for them to do. It's not. Don't agree with it. I think they need to toughen up. I think they need to understand that they need to get the knowledge from the people who they perceive as oppressing them, just like South Africa. South Africa kicked all them white people out, kicked out the engineers, the politicians, everybody, that the electricians and all of that, and then they start crumbling, and guess what they had to do? Invite them same people back. You worked up under them people for, for decades, and you didn't learn nothing. So that's what we need to do, like y'all do. Start learning. Start learning how to exploit. Start dealing with other races the way other races deal with us. Unfairly, underhandedly, so that we can come up. That's what I think. I've seen these videos where they kick white people out of places like libraries, study halls, yeah. other places that are communal. Yeah, means Atriums nothing. Atriums in uh, colleges are dubbed, you know, a safe space for minorities. I don't want no safe space. I just don't want you to charge me none for going. Black people of color only meetings. Oh, we're having a meeting about uh, something that's going on in school, but it's only for people of color. Who is the Klan meeting for? All right, you seem to really like segregation. Can we get in on this and get the fuck away from you? That's all. That's my solution, by the way, where he says we don't have solutions to these problems. What am I supposed to come up with a solution that you're fucking uh, ra raking in uh, 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 45 shootings in Chicago this past weekend? You came up with the solution. Segregation. Let's pull the trigger, man. 45 people shot. And it's only by the amazing miracle that are the doctors in these Chicago trauma uh, centers that it's not 45 deaths. The death to shooting, while most of it can be attributed to horrible marksmanship on the part of the black gang members who seem un unable to shoot their target without hitting grandma or a kid in a stroller. Where's the evidence for that? When, when did you see that? How do you know that's the case? I mean, it doesn't really matter if it is or not. But it seemed like sometimes, man, you just talking on, on what you feel, you know, like a female. Uh, what also prevents a lot of these kids from dying is uh, an amazing, the amazing advancement in medical research into trauma because of, in some cases, you know, these are war veterans from uh, Gulf War, Afghanistan and whatnot that uh, were medics and they became doctors and know how to treat gunshot wounds. And just spending enough time in shitholes like New York City and Chicago and Baltimore and LA and Oakland, uh, all, these, all these places that are just uh, unbelievable meccas of black violence. Urban centers, you heard them in there with the promise of opportunity. You get them in there, you don't hire them. You pump that degenerate culture to them 24 seven. And it's like a damn pot. It's like the frog in the pot, man. You're slowly turning up the heat on them. So the pot's boiling now, bro. And then you complaining about the frog. That's what, that, that's what's going on. So 45 shootings years ago would have amounted to probably at least half that. There was a time when there was 45 lynchings. They didn't keep no records of that. So that's probably on the low side. So I get it. Yeah, long time ago, we've progressed at least a little bit. You know, I get it. But man, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, man. So if you ain't going to be going and, and, and trying to hold people accountable for what their great-grandfathers and their grandfathers did, man, then leave these brothers alone. I mean, if they're going to kill each other, let them kill each other. If brothers is out there killing each other and they dying, they need to be gone. I don't want them in my community. Let them kill each other. It's good black people out here, man. It's people trying to build. It's people trying to have something. It's people trying to educate. It's people trying to figure this monetary system out. It's people trying to figure out generational wealth. 
Those are the ones that need to be left. And if it take it down to 3%, fine. We need to get rid of all these people, man. We really do. At least half that being deaths. Now 45 shootings, you get five, eight people killed. It's amazing. It's not that less people are getting shot. More people are getting shot. You can say, oh, look at the death rate has gone down uh, in shootings in Chicago over the years. Yeah. Hats off to the surgeons, motherfucker. And you know this, how? Where are we getting this information here from? That know how to patch up these thugs when they get uh, slugs put in them. So uh, yeah, as far as taming about. down that situation, what? I need to, to add that to my tweets? My solutions to your fuck problems? No, I, I, I put in solutions to our problem as white people. Let us be alone amongst other white people. That's all. I will, and you people will eat each other. As Patrice used to always say, man, you Italian. You damn near black yourself to other real white people. To an Irish person, you ain't white. Well, I mean, wow. That's what you don't realize. When they don't have us to pick on anymore, you're next. All it's all we want. You guys do what you want. We're not trying to get rid of you. We're trying to kill you off. You're doing a great job yourself. But if we move to an area and and build up that area that is predominantly white and make more power to you. Make it a, an amazing um society. Here, here. Yeah, just stay away. We don't want you. You'll ruin it. Been proven. Sorry. Uh, a little more of my friend here. of shit like Anthony that are destroying race relations. You think that's going to make anything better for everybody? And then not only that, but conservatives are always talking about divide and conquer the people, the corrupt people and da 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 that, that run things. They want us fighting each other. We need to unite. But then in the same line, you guys are going to be constantly, constantly posting black crime videos only black crime as if we're the only ones that do it. And then whenever oh. we brother, they couldn't post what is not there. I mean, really, honestly, you shouldn't be mad about people posting it. The bad behavior has got to go. And that starts in the mirror, not in your cell phone screen, raging against somebody else, man, for real, dude. I mean, really, how you going to get mad at somebody for just shining a light on what you doing? And I don't mean you specifically, but I mean us, our community. I mean, really, a lot of the stuff Anthony's saying, you see, I don't agree with. I think he got some traveling to do mentally himself. But, bruh, what's going on, man? What about, what did he say that you disagree with that you can refute? Where, where is that? Black crime as if we're the only ones that do it. Look, I, I, I please. Have you seen my shows? Have you read my Twitters, uh, my I tweets have. and whatnot? Uh, I've never said only black people commit crimes. No. That would be retarded of me. I, I'm very aware of who's committing crimes. You just focus on the black people. And I, I scroll through uh, Twitter and news sites and other social media uh, I don't pay attention to the TV news because it's not news. It's bullshit. And I see plenty. I see plenty of horrific crimes committed by all races of, of people. Yep. Because that's the days and times that we live in, man. Most people are good people. But there has been a market increase in degenerates. And these degenerates are taking over the culture. And the culture is what we have to guard closest of all, because that determines how people behave within it. Uh, white people do tend to uh, murder their families a lot more. <laughs> uh, how do you know that? Where does that at for that? Uh, you get a dad, uh, boy, he'll take out the whole family, the mom, the kids, dog. I see those. It's rare that it happens, but it does happen, and I see it, and it's terrible. I see uh, 
white guys committing crimes stopped by the cops. They uh, fuck around and they find out by the cops. White guys are the kings of the serial killing. You got some serial killers in history with 80 and 90 people deleted. Just one person. Y'all the kings of that. Because you bored, you're intelligent, and some of y'all are just evil. And they're left taking the room temperature challenge uh, on the pavement. Here's the difference. As white people, we don't look, read what happened, and then take the uh, corpse's side just because the cops shot him. Because usually, in the vast majority of cases, it's completely justified. Now, that's a point right there. But you'll never get minorities to agree with that. They'll never look at what or how the person that got shot by the cops behaved. It's a feminine thing. Just like a woman, most women, not a woman, most women, are incapable of taking responsibility and seeing their side of anything. You'll notice this when you ask them a question and they know that you're either right or they can't answer it, then they start asking questions back. So I get what you're saying right there, bro. That is a point. The white guy was a criminal uh, jerk off that deserved every bullet that went into his face. We don't sit there and protest and say, oh, look. And by the way, white people are shot and killed by cops more often than black people are. Amen. While on the other hand, black people shoot cops at a much higher rate than white people. Amen. So you'd think it should be, uh, you know, the other way around, but it's not. No, I should. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a part of, of what I've been saying and what I've been tweeting about and showing. He doesn't seem to understand, again, that I'm not trying to help you. He does. I post these things. He goes, what good is it doing? I'm not trying to do any good for your community. I think you and I know that. I am trying to let white people and civil society know that this is going on because the mainstream media will never, ever tell the people en masse what is happening in this country. Maybe not anymore, but they sure used to. They fostered that narrative. That's kind of why you have the position you have, because I can remember, as I said before, on the news, all they were showing was black crime, black this, black that. If you don't think so, man, I mean, yo, when I was living in Memphis, I mean, just turn the news on at any given time. Now, yep, brothers is murking each other, but that's all they were showing. It wasn't no uplifting stuff about what, you know, some of these uh, black people who trying to make things better that, that wasn't hitting the news, man. So, you know, I think you're kind of wrong on what you're saying there. They have a narrative now to where they're trying to, you know, make those people that are perpetrators victims. That's kind of flipped a little bit. But it's it's been decades, man, of, of them perpetuating the myth and perpetuating and only focusing on when black people commit crimes, man. You know, kind of like you doing. So it falls to people like me pieces of shit, as you uh, so eloquently put it. And Gavin McInnes is also. I like Gavin too. So it's Gavin's job too, right? A piece of shit. <laughs> and there's other people. I've seen shows. Okay. Love it. Give us the reason why black people are actually shit. No, you guys are actually the dumb ones. You see black graduates, Insult. you're going to trash them. You see a black pilot, you're going to trash them. You see a black person doing anything, you're going to call them DEI. Guess yeah. what, y'all dumbasses? There's a lot of us that are way smarter than you, including myself. They're really? Because you don't seem to be doing so well in this rebuttal to his tweet because I don't see no points being refuted, man. And just like him, where you get this study that there's a whole lot of us smarter than them? A whole lot? I mean, I went to school <laughs> and I go to work, man. And I know it's anecdotal. And maybe, just maybe, I'm not moving in these circles of intelligentsia that you're moving in. But I think you're reaching on this one, bro. There's okay, a lot pause. Of us that pause. 
maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe there are good pilots, <clears throat> good black pilots. Maybe there are good uh, black engineers. Maybe there are good black doctors. How the fuck would I know if there's also diversity, equity, and inclusion? And and I want you, I want y'all to see something now. Even though I'm not agreeing with a lot of Anthony's points, he's refuting the man's talking points. But this man is engaging in shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. Now, all my Kevin Samuel people out there will know what that is and who predominantly behaves like that. And as I said before, we're three generations removed from fathers in the home. What, what, you roll the dice? I'm supposed to get on a plane and look into the, the cockpit and if I see a black pilot, I'm just supposed to assume that they're qualified, even though. Yeah, man, because they're in the seat. You, you, you must assume that they're qualified because if not, what is the flip side of that? People falling out the sky, planes crashing. I know there were a couple of accidents. I, I think one where the, a black lady couldn't really land the plane. I give you that, but that's one, dude. That's anecdotal. That's one. I, where are all of these unqualified pilots and what is the harm that they're doing? So I get that you don't know, but if you don't know, then why would you assume the worst? Well, there's an entire program based on nothing but getting unqualified people into those jobs. Through unqualified, they still have to pass flight training. They still have to pass it. The DEI is to get them to the test, bro, not through the test. And if you have any evidence to the contrary, please produce that. Nothing but their skin color. So I'm supposed to roll them bones and take the chance? Them bones, them bones. Or yeah, I could look at someone bone. and know that they really had to prove themselves. Which, by the way, nowadays are white people. White people, and Asians especially. Even more than white people, Asians have to prove themselves that they are unbelievably qualified for a job above and beyond anyone else. What? <laughs> I ain't never met an Asian that I had to wonder whether they were qualified to do what they were doing. I ain't even went to the Asian restaurant and, and had that feeling. What you talking about? Because they are not getting any DEI benefits. And why? This man said, Asians ain't getting no DEI. Has he seen Disney Star Wars lately? Man, please. White people, they are being uh, uh, chased away from occupations like pilots and doctors uh, in lieu of uh, black people. Asian people? Man, as I said, if you have any stats on that or anybody that's been through that, please produce them. Cause right now you just talking, man. Just because there, someone decided there were too many of them. Oh, what? Another white pilot? Is he qualified? Great. Why? Is he drunk? White pilot. So when you say, you know, that there are good black pilots and doctors and engineers out there, uh, how can I know that when DEI and affirmative action exist? You can't know if the white ones are good, fool. That's the point. You don't know. Jeez. You can assume like you're doing, and you can assume along racial lines like you're doing, but you don't know that the white man, like I said, man, I live in a predominantly white part of the country, man. And all the doctors ain't good. Wow. If those programs didn't exist and everyone got these jobs on merit, then I can look into a cockpit, see a black pilot and go, cool. I know he went through every single uh, uh, test, every single bit of training that he needed to sit in that seat. Let me paint you a picture. Young man come from generations of money goes to school mediocre dad 
donates to the school, pays who he got to pay, get the kid good grades. The kid goes on, goes through medical school. You know, maybe a couple of people die under his care. Dad sweep it under the rug, got a few politicians that he's paying. I mean, that's, you don't know, man. You don't know that that person's good. You know, it, it, everything you saying can apply in the opposite direction, man. So it's cool. And I feel you, brother. We got problems. We need to straighten America up and the black people need to start with the black people, man. And you got all the right in the world to point it out, which is why I'm glad you're pointing it out because black people need to know what y'all think, man. They need to know how y'all think. I think we need to stop making up what we think you think in your head. And I think we need to let you tell us, man. Therefore, I know what I'm dealing with. Like anyone else would have had to. No, he doesn't. You can't even argue that he doesn't have to go through that, that the bar is lowered. And you can't argue the opposite. <laughs> wow. That's a fact. I, is it? It's not my opinion. It's not something I'm making up. Sounds like your opinion. And a great deal of this sounds made up. It's not gaslighting. The fact is that black people are being put in positions based on skin color, even when they are not as qualified as a white person would be at the same job. Show me an example of this. As I said, I don't agree with DEI. I think everything we should be in a meritocracy. I agree with that, but it's to get them to the test, not through the test. They still have to qualify. Do you know the criminal liability that would be on these companies and these schools and these institutions if they were turning out people that were so inadequate that they were causing harm and even death to people? So what you're saying does sound emotional. What you're saying does sound made up because you ain't produced no evidence to back up nothing that you're talking about. And you want me to look and go, oh, well, maybe, maybe he's one of the qualified ones that didn't need DEI or affirmative action. Nope, ain't gonna happen, fuck you. That's the same thing as us thinking we know what your thoughts are about race in your own head. I'm just gonna make an assumption that you think this or that you think that. Same thing, you're making an assumption. And I get it, stand on it, brother, amen. I'm gonna look at anyone in those jobs and go, DEI, fuck you. I'm not trusting you as much as I would uh, somebody that I know damn well isn't being given uh, a break uh, on his intellect or skills. A break on your intellect, huh? Hmm. Sorry. All right, let's hear a little more. A lot more. of us that have much higher level of education than dumbasses like you that come on the internet from behind a fake profile so you can say little mean things about those people that you don't like. And and that's the point because Anthony is not very educated. I get it. He what high school, like everybody else. I get it. He he's very intelligent, but educated. You right. But that's, that's the thing. Education don't make you intelligent. You just can regurgitate and recite back a whole bunch of stuff This is memory retention. And, and another sad thing about it is second that here too. I'm so tired of this. My name is Anthony Cumia. <laughs> I own a mansion and a yacht. My name is Anthony Cumia. Okay. My name is Anthony Cumia. I'm rich. Yeah. Let's get to it. People constantly as if they're all trash. That's what he does. About any group. Piece of shit. I'm talking about and also, Elon Musk, you're a piece of shit for allowing this under the guise of free speech. This has became 4chan. Like this thing could be wired so much better for us to actually make major change that was good for the world. Oh, my brothers, my brothers trying to kill each other, my brothers. I got you smothered like grave again, rice. Listen, brother, I don't know if it's fascism, but I do know that freedom of speech cuts both ways, man. For you to be free to say what you want, he's got to be free to say what he want. But the difference is he's refuting points that you bring up and you're just talking, insulting, and just grandstanding about nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Sound and fury signifying nothing. I mean, the, the platform is wide open now. 
I'm glad that he's allowing Anthony Cumia and anybody else who wants to have an opinion to get on there and say what they got to say. Because inevitably, if he was to censor it, it would be censored one way or the other. Either conservative people would be, cons would be censored or liberal people would be censored. As it is with Elon, everybody gets a crack. Defeat his points, man. Like I said, if you got the truth on your side, if you got righteousness on your side, then you don't have to worry about lies and deception and hate and prejudice. But the way you going about it is giving him all the ammo to not only back up and reinforce what he believe, but make you look stupid doing it. But here we are pause, just in a shit pause. First of all, it's not under the guise of free speech. It's free speech. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blacks are killing people under the guise of murder in Chicago. It's crazy. What? No. This is free speech. He keep on going back to the Chicago thing. You ever heard of Al Capone? Well, Al Capone was, was he black? I think he was Italian. Come on, man. Remember in the eighties when the mob was running through New York, just killing the hell out of each other. That's the same thing, man. But y'all gang is better than our gangs, I guess. I mean, the death toll when, you know, when the mob was running crazy before they got really shut down, it was on the same situation. Now the crime that moved on to my community and it's because I'm black. It ain't because of the same reason why it was because the Italians was doing it because they was greedy and degenerate. That's why they was doing it. And it's the same reason why we doing it. Lazy, greedy, degenerate. And I got to say it, bottom line, evil, man. It's like, oh, there are all these black people being killed in Chicago. What was the time when there was a lot of white people being killed in Chicago by white people, man? That's just history, man. And I get it. Once again, it doesn't excuse what the brothers is doing. But get off your high horse, man. Get off that horse. Put your feet on the ground. Two flat feet on the ground, brother. It, it, it's allowing people of very, very differing viewpoints to voice their uh, opinions and takes on things. You don't like it, which is great. There are plenty of things I see on Twitter I don't like or agree with or think is shit or is spoken by pieces of shit. The one thing I don't ever say is that they don't have a right to be on. I can block whoever I want. I don't have to listen to anybody. That's a point. They have every right to say what they want to say. I personally don't have to listen to it. I do listen to things that I need to, to uh, uh, get educated on, on certain people's take, certain communities' feelings about some things. Sure. I'm an expert in the black community. I know every. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, we got a generation of people nowadays that think that they are above being offended. I mean, being offended is something that's just naturally going to happen. A lot of times it's perspective. A lot of times a person can offend you without even meaning to cause offense. So this thing that we have to where somebody says something and it gets you so heated that you got to go and do something about it when it doesn't really affect you one way or another that, you know, to the point to where you don't even want them to have the right to say it. That is definitely moving down the wrong path. Like I said, man, if Hitler had these tools, man, we'd all be speaking German. The fact that he's saying, you know, Elon Musk uh, should be ashamed of himself for some, and that if, if, if he took, Elon Musk, my African-American brother, ashamed of something? I don't think so. Twitter and made it different, it would be a platform that helped what? Twitter before Elon? Because that's, that's exactly what you're talking about, by the way. That's how far the brother was thinking, man. He doesn't remember that Twitter was exactly what he's talking about. One-sided toward the liberal stance before Elon took over and didn't anything get better. You are talking about pre-Elon Twitter. It's been tried. It don't work. 
You motherfuckers are still offing each other in record numbers and still committing crimes and still beating the shit out of white people. Uh, that was a liberal, just a, a liberal bubble. And if you were a conservative or anybody that spoke about race as freely and openly as, thank God, uh, me and other people are allowed to these days under Elon's uh, uh, ownership, they would have been thrown off, as I was thrown off yep. for saying that there's a jump to violence in the black community in yep. 20. He right about that jump to violence, man. There is a jump to violence in the black community, man. And I think that we violence doesn't really solve anything, man. It doesn't. I think rule of law, basically law. And I believe in the law of God, not the law of man. Although you have to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So... If we come up with laws that we agree to abide by and live up under, if they're unjust and you fight to get them changed, man, you know, you can't just do, do what you want to do, do what thou wilt. That is not the law. 14. I didn't make a dime from that. I lost a lot of money <laughs> for tweeting uh, about black people you did. Uh, back in the day. So it wasn't always about money, my friend. Uh <laughs> So, you know, this guy just doesn't seem to understand that Twitter was exactly what you said. It didn't help shit. Liberals spouting off about how evil conservatives are and calling everyone racist and kicking everyone off of social media. Uh, that's not helping things. It didn't help anything. No. It emboldened uh, you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. Talking about... Uh, uh, you know, you, the only thing you could talk about as far as police and blacks being uh, involved with each other was how evil the police were. As I said, New York City in the 80s, there were literally evil police. And, and how, you know, uh, racist they were. And what did that do? Only made more animosity and emboldened black people to defy uh, legitimate orders from the police. And now they're getting into brawls on the side of the street constantly. Constantly? I roll up and down the street every day. I ain't seen one brawl yet. So, uh, yeah, that didn't help, my friend. Maybe, maybe knowing that we are seeing you, we see you. Maybe knowing that I'm playing a fuckload of, of videos of black people uh, acting very badly. As well you should, my friend, but understand this, I can play a load of white people acting very badly just the same. Probably more than you can of black people and look at the situation that we in. That's, you know, that this is America, it is what it is, so continue to do what you do, my friend. If that's the way you want to get your money, that's fine committing horrible crimes every day. Maybe you... Horrible crimes every day. You got these young Caucasian women deleting their kids, but you ain't made no video about that. And that's cool. I guess you leaving that for me. I get it. Knowing that, maybe that'll help things. Hmm? Like I said, not that I give a shit, but uh, a little shame. Are you are you that angry because I'm calling out your community, even yep. though you he uh, you fancy yourself a smart, civil person? He does. Good. Maybe now you'll say something to the people that are the real problem, that are the people uh, responsible for why maybe you get followed in a store, or maybe why you're getting pulled over by the cops. Listen, man. Sometimes when I get out of my car at Walmart, I see white ladies wrapping their purse around their arm, dude, you know. And the last thing on my mind is doing anything to them. But I gotta say, I see why. I'm 6'5", man. I'm a big black dude with dreadlocks. I mean, you'd be a fool not to at least think that it could happen. Or or well, that people are crossing the street when you walk down the sidewalk. Maybe maybe you'll you'll realize who's responsible for that and actually do something. Now, uh, speak to that group of people instead of me. 
Yeah, we'll finish up. What is he We say? are just in a shit bowl, and then there's dumbasses like Anthony Cumia, who is a piece of shit. There's dumbasses like Insults. him that can be near the top of it with engagement because he's a piece of shit and just says whatever he wants. And there's a whole bunch of dumbass Guilt. racist people that agree. What would happen if we weren't doing that, but we were still focused on how bad crime is? Need but not to be just, right. just saying it so I can make a funny joke about the niggers. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure under the comments too, there's gonna be so many people talking crap about it. You don't know me, you don't know nothing about me. Well, you showed us Anthony, what we you're need to a piece you, of shit. Thank you. So that's relatively it, man. You know, uh, like I said, the brother got on Anthony's platform and didn't refute any points, didn't do anything to try to shame him. He insulted him. He tried to guilt him. And he's coming from the position that he's right about everything. And uh, it ain't that, man. So I'm going to bid everybody adieu. This is Laura Fader Perspective. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.